March Madness is upon us. Duke head coach Mike Krzyzewski is set to retire as perhaps the greatest college basketball coach of all time. And you must acknowledge his greatness. The final home game of Coach Mike Krzyzewski's Duke coaching career. This was the entry for the man, the myth, the legend. 96 former players came to support him. Jerry Seinfeld and NBA Commissioner Adam Silver were among those in the building. I don't even know what to say. It's, it, it's like part of my basketball life is disappearing. Thank you, Coach K, and go Duke. Please. You know you didn't see in that video? A lot of black people over 35. We kind of hate that dude. We hate that he beat every team black people loved. Ten years ago, if Duke would have played the Ku Klux Klan, we would have rooted for a 0-0 tie. However, to much of the nation, Duke basketball was like venture capital, speaking with a manager, bringing your dog to work. Symbolic of white excellence. Just like these excellent white Duke alums, Richard Nixon, Richard Spencer, and the man who wears his heart on his hairline, Stephen Miller. <laughs> Coach K brought those excellent vibes to Durham in 1980. Just listen to how he talks about their recruiting. What Duke does, it, it gives me, uh, it limits some of my recruiting because not every youngster can get into Duke. And that doesn't mean that kids who don't make it at Duke are worse or better. It's just that schools are for different kids doesn't sound like he was recruiting the kids from rosa parks high school <laughs> let me be clear coach k's legacy is built on society's perception of whiteness the idea that his players overcame their physical deficiencies that they were harder working smarter not as athletic being good made coach k a star being better than us made him a legend and that's not Coach K being racist. But the rest of you, <laughs> I don't know. So let me take it back to 1980. The rising tide of blackness in college basketball was a threat to the whole game. That year, the Louisville Cardinals won their first championship. Some people called them the Blackbirds. Yes, it only took a half black roster to get a racist nickname back then. Not quite the one drop rule. But damn if it don't feel the same. Anyway, soon after, John Thompson's Georgetown established itself as a power. Black power. Every single player on their 1984 championship team was black. If somebody would have called them the Blackbirds, I would have understood. But in 1986, Duke lost to Louisville in the national championship. Check out how the Chicago Tribune felt about that. Funk wins. Scholarship loses. So much for literacy. Drape all the campus libraries in black. They really must have thought black players couldn't read if they printed that shit. I mean, it's not like white sports fans had nothing to be proud of. The best player in the NBA was Larry Bird. Quarterbacks were still supposed to be white. And the heavyweight champions of the world were these guys. But college basketball seemed on the brink of eternal darkness. That's when Coach K pulled up with the Caucasian Avengers. And their Captain America was this guy. Now, before you say anything, we're not erasing Johnny Dawkins, Grant Hill, and other black devils. But Christian Leitner was so white, he got caught stepping on somebody and didn't even get thrown out of the game. It was symbolic of why some people didn't like Christian, you know, in terms of him willing to cross the line and do something a little bit arrogant. It was just a little love tap on his chest. Asshole. <laughs> Duke beat every team black folks love from 1986 to 92. Georgetown, Arkansas, UNLV, and the one program that felt the most like ours, Michigan's Fab Five. Look at these cool motherfuckers. Black socks, long shorts, pristine edge ups. Well, Coach K and the Supercuts All-Stars kicked their fresh asses repeatedly. No wonder Jalen Rose was salty about it. Schools like Duke didn't recruit players like me. I felt like they only recruited black players that were Uncle Tom's. Too far, Jalen. But to be fair, it seemed to me that the press wasn't just rooting for Duke. They were standing up for him along the way. I'm sure that the UNLV players are gaining some respect for the courage of the Duke players as well. Neither team backing away. 
and, and that's an important thing to consider when you play Georgetown. Sure. They play you tough and physical, and the only way is to look them straight in the eye and say, we'll play that way, too. I mean, that's just, that's just the way it is athletically, and I don't think anybody should make any great big headline deal out of it. The Fab Five against America's Finest, coming up next. America's Finest? Who are they, the Durham PD? Now, remember... At this point, a lot of folks loved Duke as much as they hated hip hop, which was taking over everywhere, except college basketball. Until now, this was the closest rap had gotten to college ball. Is this basketball by Mr. Curtis But some of those iconic black teams started bringing the culture right onto the basketball court with them. But not Duke. Coach K's kids didn't break it down, break beats, or break dance. You scratch a record at Danny Ferry's house and you owe him a new Toto album, <laughs> which is the closest Africa got to Duke until Luol Dang showed up. Either way, Coach K was claiming all I do is win way before DJ Khaled. And yeah, Duke had a down year in 1995, but that got Coach K to recruit outside of his usual young Republicans. He brought in some of the most talented teams he ever had, and they got really good again. But then, in 1999, for the first time ever at Duke, those guys left school early and took all their swag with them to the NBA. In 2006, Coach K had figured out how to go from Steve Urkel to Stefan Urkel. He became the coach of USA Basketball. That got all the cool kids' attention. You know, I love Coach Kelly. I love playing for him. I love talking to him on off days and during practices. And, you know, uh, you know, I, I've been, you know, blessed, you know, with me not having the ability to go to college, coming straight out of high school to have a college coach. LeBron said he didn't have the ability to go to college like he couldn't read or something. Not because he was too smart to pass up a $90 million Nike deal. Anyway, the point is that the kids who didn't know nothing about no Christian Leitner knew about players on Team USA, like Kobe. Kevin Durant and LeBron James. And now, somehow, the name Mike Shashevsky rings out in the streets like Nikki Barnes. Coach K get love in the streets. So it don't matter if we're in Manhattan or Harlem. They know Coach K, man. It's crazy. Think about how crazy that is. In the 80s, parents from Duke wouldn't let their kids get within 40 acres of Harlem. Now this team looks like the kids who sell you candy on the train. The all-academic Duke team that everybody talked about was full of one and dunners. But it's funny. Hardly anyone calls Krzyzewski a hypocrite. Because when he did it, that was just the game. Because he was the game. Are you a supporter of this one and done rule? It doesn't make any difference if you're supportive of it. We have no control over it. What you have to do, like you have to do in business, is adapt. And adapt he did, because black culture did eventually take over college basketball. But I'll be honest, college basketball was better when Duke was the official team of white America. Every game felt like one of those episodes of Family Feud. Think about basketball like the name Tyrone. After a while, white folks just let us keep it for ourselves. But you know some folks won't let us have nothing. And for four decades, a lot of fans felt like Coach K was the one person who just couldn't let us have this one thing. It all felt like personal, even if it wasn't. So believe me when I say sincerely, happy retirement, Coach K. No one has been wishing for this day longer than us. So to commemorate the real legacy of Coach K, we decided to give him his very own museum exhibit. Check it out. To help the black community process Coach K's 42-year reign of terror, we opened The Boys in Blue, Coach K's March Across America, an exhibit at the Schomburg Center for Black Research and Culture in Harlem. All day, we led the public on tours through our many exhibits, highlighting Coach K's destruction of our beautiful black college basketball teams. The section of the exhibit is called Trail of Snares. Look at this picture right now. What do you see? A coach talking to a ref? or a Karen talking to a cop. Same vibes. Sir, I see, your, I see your, your faces scrunching. You've seen these faces before. And were they bringing you good news? Never. Were they bringing you positivity? Never. Were they uplifting you? Never. I want you to look at this one right here. 
What do you get when you look at this picture? A lot of anger in his eyes, how he feels about himself and others. So you see self-hate. Uh -huh. The anger's coming from within. That man right there stole my dreams. Talk to me. I used to play high school basketball with Jamal Mashburn. Mm. And lost to him. Are you still friends with Jamal Mashburn? Absolutely. Is he still troubled by what happened? Absolutely. If you could express your feelings about Coach K in one word, what would that word be? Terror. Terror. I think that about sums it up. Let's move on to the next section, everybody. He wasn't the only one Coach K terrified. Our exhibit also showcased the nightmarish illustrations the children of Detroit drew after Duke defeated the Fab Five in the 1992 NCAA championship game. As a native of Detroit, Michigan, this is only giving me PTSD. So you saw the game that these kids saw. And I was that age. The city was down altogether. I'm sure the water got a little dirtier after this defeat. That's Flint. My bad. My bad. Dozens of artifacts told the stories of black trauma, like Aminu Timberlake's jersey that Christian Leitner stomped on with his punk ass. Coach K's single game salary, and the salaries of every Duke player from 1980 to present, and the embarrassing linchpins to Coach K's success. The next section of the exhibit is called the Wall of Unimpressive Whites. It was these goofy white athletes that were out there beating our amazing black college basketball teams. And of course, Sheldon Williams. He is not white, but he's white by association. Look at this guy. He looks like Top Gun's co-pilot. What was his name? Goose. Goose. This goose-looking motherfucker. Beating all our teams. And that's wrong. Y'all ready for the next section of the exhibit? Yeah. Yes. I need some water. I'm, t I'm, I'm getting pissed off. And I get it. These corn-fed, cop-calling, cul-de-sac-dwelling caucasoids and Sheldon had shattered the dreams of our heroes. Thankfully, our altar of the NCAA dead homies gave patrons a chance to pay their respect. Chris Webber, that was my dude, man. I had the... I had the black socks. Anybody, anybody had the black socks? Y'all had the, the, black, the socks. black socks? But their pain was nothing compared to what some have endured. And now we've reached the Jalen Rose part of our exhibit. Ladies and gentlemen, Jalen Rose, a true survivor of Coach K's march across America. I'm 0-4 against Coach K. He beat me each time, even once after my uncle passed and they came to Ann Arbor. I had a patch on my jersey and everything. It still didn't matter. This is not fiction. This ain't no wax figure. This is a real one right here. I once dribbled the ball across half court against Bobby Hurley. And he just fell for no reason, and they called a charge. Goddamn flopping. Who's this Bobby Hurley? A miniature point guard for the Duke Blue Devils. Small man. Are those really his shorts? They are. We were extra baggy shorts. Bobby Hurley chose a kid's medium. Too much thigh for my eye. Damn right. And we shouldn't allow ourselves to be terrorized by these creamy thighed, Oshkosh B guy sized devils. These Duke athletes aren't monsters. They're suckers, led by a five foot 10 inch tyrant that we, as a community, have overcome. Our day had come to an end. But of course, no Black History Museum would be complete without a cool down area to process our emotions. Breathe in and return to the real world with a renewed sense of self. And always remember that Coach K collected over 40 years of victories, but Danny Green still put his balls on Greg Paulus's forehead. Keep up alive.